Hello everyone, how are you? I'm sorry if I sound a bit ill, but that's because I am and my nose is a bit runny and kind of disgusting. But that's too much information and I will I will spare you the details. I'm trying to get better in having my tea and taking all the medicine and herbs and potions. But yeah. I had this idea, this exercise that I wanted to make a, a long time now. I never really read books about painting, theories and techniques and all that academic stuff. And I always found more valuable to learn through experience and through watching others do. Learning and trying different things and not really following rules, um, which doesn't always go well, but... <laughs> I don't believe there's a size fits all in arts, but there's always space for learning and that's what I stand for. And since it's the, the Chinese New Year, I had this book for a long time and I love the pictures. This is a uh, one of those uh, really thick and really awesome books with paintings from the Chinese propaganda. and. It has some really great paintings. I'm telling you, this Chinese painting game is strong. Yes! This book is packed with those really nice paintings of very chubby children next to huge watermelons and really perfect peaches. I don't know if you are picturing what I'm saying, but the Chinese have this idea of prosperity that is charming. They take their vegetables and fruits very seriously, and so do I. I really like my vegetables, so I chose these portraits. I will try to recreate somehow. I will do something that I usually don't do, which is another painting of some sort. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying, okay? Give me a break. So, I'm using this really large brush to you know, map up the, um, the sketch, because I'm not sketching. My goal is to not use any pencil, any guides. I'm just trying to paint as I go. The only tool I'm using is a brush from start to finish. I'm using gouache paints for this. Uh, don't know if it was the right choice, but we'll see how it goes. I'm mapping the areas where there's more shadow. So I guess from from what I read, we shall make light from shadow, right? So you build the light up and not the other way around. Hmm. I'm confused. Yeah, I guess that's how you should do it. You should build the light from the shadow. So at this point, you should be able to get this brown painting <laughs> so you're doing it right i don't have a brown gouache so i mixed all the colors i had which were three tubes of the primary colors i mixed them straight for the best and i got this shade that's perfect for what i'm doing because i know you are supposed to use like burnt sienna or raw umber you know those fancy shade names you hear all the time but I don't have those. At this stage, it, the painting gets really creepy, but you just gotta keep on moving. I promise you, if you keep adding and working, things get better. <laughs> Bear with me. I guess with painting, you have to be very patient because you can't see the results right away. It's a process. You have to enjoy the process. And most of the painting process is ugly and it's not finished and sometimes it looks discouraging but you have to bear in mind that in the end you'll be able to see the big picture and it will be worth it regardless okay we always learn something even if the painting is a big giant poo, -poo. never stop believing what else what else what else so whenever this underpainting is complete I start adding color with this technique called glazing and glazing is basically uh, adding a thin and sort of transparent layer on the painting 
that will modify the appearance of the underpainting. So it will change basically the color, but not necessarily the value. I don't know if this makes any sense, but imagine that your painting is actually a Photoshop file. So the layers kind of blend with each other, depending on their settings, you know. When it's transparent, you will see what's beneath, but it will change it somehow, you know. This is a good technique to add color to a grayscale or a painting that has been made with using just one shade. The closer I get to the finished painting, the more opaque the color gets. I tend to use more pigment, uh, less water, so I dilute the, the color a bit less. It means less transparency, more opacity, and so I can really get on those details and focus on that little, little small things that make it uh, extra special. At this point I'm just painting and I'm painting and I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. Well, I think I will just shush for a moment now and I will go do something else. Like, I'm very hungry. I'm very hungry. I think I'll just go and eat something and okay. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new, I hope you liked this video and I hope this motivates you to paint if you were uncertain if you should paint or not, so do it, just paint, you just gotta paint, you just gotta paint, okay, I will go now, talk to you soon, <laughs> bye! Thank you.